Praise the Lord. I just want to uh, conclude. I started an introductory message on uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, which is what we are running with in the house this year, in this house this year, by the special grace of God. In this particular church, personally as a pastor here, I don't believe in my year of this, my year of that. I believe that every individual should have a relationship with God. I believe in times and seasons because that's what the scripture says. But of course, we've been brought into this mindset of, in fact, some of us are now giving pastors pressure. So that pastor on the 31st, pastor must first go and pray and say, Lord, what are you saying for next year? What are you saying for next year? Even when God is not saying something. So somebody must come out to say something. So <laughs> I think I told us about two or three services ago that in the, some of the churches that I've been before, I always look at, okay, pastor said this is the year of buying cars. I'm not said any pastor said that. Too. Just giving an example. So how many people have been able to buy cars? <laughs> I'm looking at that because if God sent his word, praise God. I've got, has God told anybody here something before and it didn't come to pass? It's not possible. If God says something, oh my goodness, it has to come. So sometimes some of us force those pastors to come and say the personal word that God is giving them as if it is this. So somebody is running with that. Run with the word that God will speak to you by yourself. You need to get to that level of relationship with God. That God speaks to you. God wants to speak to you. He wants to talk to you. Praise the Lord. He wants to reveal things to you about your destiny. So don't hang your destiny on me. Don't hang your destiny on any pastor. Praise God. Somebody say, I'm taking charge of my destiny. Oh, some people did not hear that. Say, I am taking charge of my destiny. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to uh, try to conclude by God's grace on that introductory uh, message. Of course, I told us, so the topic is, for those that were not here last week, or for some people that are just joining us online, that were not part of the message last week, Jesus, the only true shepherd. That's the topic, Jesus, the only true shepherd. So last week, of course, I've, I gave us a few reasons, a few of the numerous reasons why Jesus is the only true shepherd, and not just that, why you must, let me not say you must, because even God does not give us any must. He has given you your choice. Why you should submit fully to his authority. I told us last week that Jesus is one with God. John chapter 10 verse 30. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 told us that Jesus is the express exact image of God. Praise God. I told us last week also that he bought us, he bought you, he bought me with a precious price of his own life. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 23 said you've been bought with a precious price don't become slaves of men again. Don't become slaves of men again. The same access that I have as a pastor, I'm not ashamed to tell people the truth. The same access that I have as a pastor, the same access you have. The difference between us is maybe I dedicate myself to pray more. Maybe I dedicate myself to study the word more. The same blood, Jesus did not save me with a golden blood and save me with a silver blood. Is there anything like that? We are all saved on the same bloodline. Praise the Lord. And so we all have the same access. So don't be deceived. Don't be, don't be fooled around, actually. You remember that the book of um, Ephesians chapter 4, at maybe verse 13 or verse 12 or 13, it says, Till we come to what? The unity of faith. That we be no more tossed here and there with every wind of doctrine. So we need to understand the scriptures. Say to yourself, say, I am understanding the scriptures. So I told us that Jesus bought us with a precious price of his own life. And of course, we can confirm that also in John chapter 10, verse 15. And another one that is so interesting that I told us last week is that he intercedes for you. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Jesus is interceding for you. So I'm going to be bringing this to conclusion today. You know, we are reading two books this year. And some of us, how many of us started reading the books already? Okay, God bless you. God bless all of us, of course, but I appreciate you guys more if you have started reading already. We are reading The Shepherd Luke at Psalm 23, and we are reading The God Chasers. Those are the two books we are reading in this church this year by the grace of God. So, um, of course, uh, Philip Keller is the writer of uh, The Shepherd Luke at Psalm 23. And so he noticed, I mean, he observed some things in his writing. And he, of course, he, he wrote them down. 
and I want to relate those things with us this morning. And I'm going to hang this message around those things. He noticed something about the sheep. He said the sheep will never lie down or they will never come to rest uh, because of four major things. And I'll quickly highlight those four things. He said if the sheep, if they are timid or afraid or they have fear, they will never lie down. They will never come to rest. The second thing he mentioned is he said if there is friction among the sheep, they will never come to rest or come to lie down. The third thing he said is, if there are parasites around the sheep or on the sheep. And the fourth thing he said is, if the sheep are hungry. All these things will never make the sheep to come to rest. It will never make the sheep to come to lie down. It will never come make the sheep to relax. First, if they are timid or afraid, if there is friction among the sheep, if there, if there are parasites around them or on them, if they are hungry. So, don't forget I've been telling us why you should submit to Jesus. This is very, very important and very crucial because if you allow your life to be controlled by someone else or some ideology that is different from that of God, you won't be able to achieve what you should achieve because God created you. Jesus created you. Everything was created by Jesus. I, I did all of that a bit in the introductory, the first message. So he created you. He knows everything. Jeremiah chapter 29, 11 says, I know the thoughts I have towards you. They are thought of good, not of evil, to give you what? An expected end. So he has something in mind and he created you. Praise God. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. He says, right from your mother's womb. Come on. I formed you. And he said what? I have separated you for what? For a purpose. So God knows everything about you. So why would you allow some ideologies or some people to control your life? That's why you should submit to the totality of Christ's rule, of Christ's command, of Christ's leadership. So the first thing that he said is that if they are timid or if they are afraid. Now, Jesus is the only one that can take away your fear. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the only one that can take away your fear. I want us to look at the scriptures. John chapter 16 verse 33. John 16 33. There's so much in the world today for us to cope with. There's covid there, is, um, there are other things. There are financial crises. People are trying to get jobs. Some people are losing jobs. Some jobs are closing down and everything. There are reasons to be afraid. In fact, even myself as a pastor, when I'm going anywhere, I'm, I'm trying to do like this because of the fear that is already on, on ground with us. You are being careful. Oh, I don't want to touch this person. I don't want to touch that person. Jesus is the only one that can take away your fear. Is it financially? Whatever level of fear that you have, Jesus is the only one that can take it away. He says, these things I have spoken to you, that in me, you may have what? You may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulations. We're already having it. Praise the Lord. Every now and then, we're having tribulations in the world. It can come in form of pestilence, in form of this, in form of financial mess, in form of whatever thing. But we have peace in Christ because he has overcome the world for us. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. The Bible is also encouraging on that place that we should fear not because he that is in us. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you. Can somebody say he who is in me? Is greater than he who is in the world. There's a song that says, that I thought I was going to sing that song today before, but of course, you can see the way the weather is. We could not rehearse and all that. I would have respect you guys. Can you give me the key? I will just freestyle the song. Maybe you guys will help me out. Praise God. The victory is us as we sing unto Jesus. He rejoices when we give all the praise. With a shout and a dance because the devil is defeated. 
our God is worthy to be praised. The devil has been what? Defeated. Jesus bled and died for iniquities. His grace and his mercy spent the price for me. Oh, I will love him, I will love him, yes I do. Our God is worthy to be praised. Somebody shout, hallelujah, it's the highest praise. Just the devil's defeat, and listen. He's under my feet, leave those hands to the heavens. I have been set free. Clap for my Jesus. In victory. Come on, clap for Jesus in this place. <laughs> because you have victory in Christ. You need to have that understanding because the devil has been defeated. You have no reasons to fear. You have no reasons to live in fear. There are tribulations in the world, but you have Christ. And that Christ, Jesus, is on the inside of you. And because of that, you are greater than whatsoever thing you you know, you come across in the world. So, let your fear be taken away. So, submit fully to Christ. He is able, more than able, to take away your fears. He is much more than able to take away your fears. But only if you surrender fully to him. Because you know, there are times he will give you instruction do this, don't do that, do this and all of that. This is what you have to do. This is how you do in this particular situation. This is the next instruction. That's why you need to be fully surrendered to him. So, it's not about playing church or just coming to church by association. No. It's good we come to church, of course. As a pastor, like I've always said, when the church is full, I'm happy. That gratifies my flesh. That, oh, ah, we are doing something here. But guess what? The main thing is your relationship with him. That's what counts the most. I pray that God will give us more understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's look at, let's quickly look at John chapter 10, verse 11 to 14. John chapter 10, 11 to 14. This Jesus speaking here. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. So, you don't have to be worried because Jesus, he already gave his life for you and he's even going to do much more for you. But a higher lean, a higher lean, a higher lean is anybody that is trying to take control of your life. Guess what? They will always do that to their own gain, to their own benefit. Anyone that is not leading you, especially in the word of God, you need to run away from that person. Praise God. Run away from that person. He says, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming. Whenever they see struggles and challenges in your life, because it does not favor them, what do they do? They will run away. They will run away. I don't know if anybody has experienced this before. Um, to the Canadians in the house, sorry, you may not understand what I want to say now. <laughs> you know, sometimes, I don't know if that happened to you before. Somebody is abroad, and they are telling you, come, come, when you land, just give me a call. Just give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> and the moment you land, and then you just call, it's either that number is not going again. <laughs> or they say, I'm, I'm, or they will not pick. You just be entering voice. Some people will even go to the point of changing their line. Praise the Lord. Put the all of your trust in Jesus. In God alone. They will see the wolf coming. They will leave. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. Verse 13. The next verse, please. Are you still there? <laughs> the hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. He does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I'm known by my own. Relationship. Relationship. So, Jesus, if you are fully surrendered to him, he has done it before. He can do it again, over and over. There's nothing God cannot give to you again. He has given the most precious thing, his life. The next thing the man said in his book, he said, if there is friction among the sheep, maybe like bacteria or something or whatever like that, but I try to bring out something there. 
and this is very, very important. One of the reasons people jump from maybe one church to another is maybe they get to a particular place and they feel, no, I don't like the people here, or I don't like, or somebody stepped on me or somebody like that. The reality is we are meant to, relationship is two, right? There's a vertical relationship with God and there's a horizontal one. Praise the Lord. You have to relate with people. You know, when you relate with people, what God is using that to do, he's using that to build you up. Just like some people used to mistake this issue of trial and temptation. They say God is trying them. Why would God want to try you so that you can fail? What will he gain? What will God gain from that? Praise God. But it's just misunderstanding of the scripture. Some people will be quoting, uh, God told uh, uh, Abraham to give Isaac. Of course, God was passing the message. God was passing it. What did God tell Abraham first? He said, your children shall be what? Like the what? And he was just saying, okay, give this one. What did God do eventually? He gave his only begotten son so that he can gain all of us. Some people will be using some things that they don't understand. Say, tell yourself, say, I will study the scriptures with understanding. So we are made to relate with ourselves. And so when I'm relating with you, there, is, there will be a day I will step on you. There will be a day I will take your thing. There will be a day that I will do something you don't like. What do you do? You go back to the word of God. Let the word of God guide you. The word is a lamp unto what? Unto my feet. A light unto my path. Praise the Lord. So I pray that God will help us. So Jesus is the only one if you recognize that if you are fully surrendered to him. Sometimes you will do, I don't know about you, but I'm talking about myself. There are times I've said, no, I will never talk to this person again. No, I will not do it. The Holy Spirit will come back to me and say, eh, seriously, <laughs> you will not talk to somebody again. Like, is that the same with the word of God? No, it's not. It's not. I, I came to a point in my life that when somebody offends me, I try to make excuse for that person. That is the reason why this person is doing this. So that I will not take offense. And that has been helping me. I don't fight with anybody. Nobody can say, ah, Pastor Samuel is fighting with him. Or, ah. No, I can't. It's not possible. It's not possible. So Jesus is the only one that can help your relationship with other people. Because you are going to meet with people, both believers and non-believers. At your place of work, in your school, wherever you are. You meet with nice people, even in the church. You meet with good people, bad people, nasty people even. Even in the church. Some people will say the church is like a hospital, right? Where we are all sick, so to speak. We all need help. We all need help. So Jesus is the only one that can teach you, that can guide you on how to navigate the issues of life when it comes to other people. That's another reason you must submit to him. This is one thing that this person noticed. Because you know what? When you are jumping like that, you are moving from one place, you get to this particular place of work, you don't like this person, you are going to change your job. There are people like that. They say, I don't like this person's face. I'm going to change. You are not able to grow. You are not able to develop. You are not able to build your life. That's what happens to you eventually. So sometimes an, an exam, a level that you should have gone through, you are going to another place to start all over again. All over again. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. You are going to start all over again. So Jesus has really helped us. I want us to check this. Just one of the teachings of Jesus. In John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. I'm, 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 a bit, I'm trying to run now a little bit. And in Mark chapter 20, uh, 12, verse 29 to 31. In, in John chapter 13, Jesus was speaking to his disciples. He says, love one another. He gave them a pattern. You can help me put it on the screen, please. Love one another the way I loved you. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Now, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. Do you know that most of these things that Jesus says to his disciples is because he probably noticed something. He probably saw something. And he's trying to correct them. Praise God. He said, love one another as I have loved you. So the pattern with which you must love someone is the pattern with which Jesus loves. So you don't love someone because of what you are going to gain from them. You don't love someone because they are doing something or helping you in a particular way. No. 
especially a member of the household of faith, you love them with the same pattern of love that Jesus loved you. The only thing we cannot do again is, is just because that is just once and Jesus did that, is that we cannot die for anybody. Praise God. That's the only level that you cannot go to in loving someone. Because Jesus already did that. There's no other sacrifice other than that. Praise God. And he now told us also how to deal with other people, unbelievers. Mark chapter 12, verse 29 to 31, there about. The first one, he said, we should love God with the whole of our heart and everything, right? He said, the second commandment is like it. He said, love your what? Your neighbor as yourself. The first one, to the household of faith, he says what? Love one another as I love you. Praise God. For the other one, with unbelievers especially, he says what? Love your neighbor as yourself. So, in that process of love, if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I think verses 4 to 7, love is patient, love is kind, love is long-suffering, love is, love is perseverance, apropos persevering. There are so many attributes. Can you help us put it, put it up? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 7. Verses 4, please. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Wait now, let's not rush. If you are here, you don't envy. Or you, you are here, you are envy. You need to stop it in Jesus' name. You know that these are little, little elements that we have in our lives. All these things, they don't allow us to grow. They don't. So somebody that truly loves does not envy. Do you know that envy is so much in the church? <laughs> Among Christians. And you say, ah, I love that person. But yet, you are envious of that person. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. Verse 5. Let me quickly rush through this. Verse 5, please. Love does not behave rudely. Seek its own. It's not provoke. Thinks no evil. Verse 6. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Verse 7. Bears all things. When it is easy, it bears it. When it's not easy, it bears it. So, somebody that truly loves, this is the definition of love. Believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So, submit fully to Jesus. He will take you through all these things. So, you can grow. You can grow. You wonder sometimes there are a lot of prophecies hanging over your life and you are not seeing the fulfillment. Maybe you are not yet grown as a Christian. Maybe you are not yet grown as a Christian. Thirdly, the writer noticed that if there are parasites on the sheep or around them or on them, that they will not lie down. What is parasite? Just from the normal knowledge of science. Parasite is something that it takes away from you. Is that not? Parasite takes away from you. It does not give you any benefit. Bacteria still does. Bacteria gives you benefit. That's why in the, in the one I just explained, if I fight with you now, I learn something from that. Praise God. I grow. That is if I learn anyways. I grow from that. But parasite, they only take away from you. They only take it. They attack you. They eat you. They make you sick. And so on and so forth. And parasite, it can be, it can be spiritual. And it can also be physical. I hope that somebody's prayer life will receive revival here today. In the mighty name of Jesus. I say your life will receive revival. Prayer life will receive revival in the name of Jesus. Amen. So you will stop doing a, you just woke up. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm up today. Off I go. You take time to pray. And I'm just saying this to encourage someone. Praise the Lord. I slept today, for example. I think, I know there was snow. Everybody were probably snoring and, you know, it's good to enjoy the weather and just sleep if your power is not off anyways. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I think I slept around maybe past 12 or 2. I can't remember. That was the last time I checked the time. And again, by, I think by four, few minutes to four, I was up again until now, praying. What was I doing? Praying. That's all. Praying. So I pray that your life, your prayer life will receive revival Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. So don't start to pray for one hour at a stretch. You do that one hour today, you cannot do it tomorrow. Why don't you start with five minutes? Let your five minutes be constant first. Then gradually you start increasing it. Don't copy another person. No, start at your own level. Start at your own level. That's not the point. That's just a bit digression. 
but parasite could be physical one or you know spiritual one it could be a happy habit it could be a kind of a habit that is eating your life away it could be habit some of us are in the, in some kind of habits and you know that even and guess what guess something about parasite it is never pleasant you yourself there are some things that you do after doing it you feel terrible you feel bad that's a parasite can you pray for yourself in one minute and say father every form of parasite that i have in my life let them be gone deal with them go ahead and pray for yourself go ahead and pray for yourself go ahead and pray for yourself every form of parasite in my life lord deal with them oh god i open myself up to you father deal with them because they don't make you feel comfortable at all they don't make you feel comfortable pray that god will deal with them in the mighty name of jesus in jesus mighty name we have prayed jesus is able like i've been saying he's able to sort you out but most times your level of obedience also determines how fast you get out of your situation praise god second corinthians chapter 10 verse 6 the bible says all disobedience will be dealt with only when your own obedience is complete you know i, I always say this statement some people they will say i i, I know what I'm, so, I'm what i'm supposed to do but they will never do it i know what i'm supposed to do they will not do it i know i know when you tell them they know everything they have all the answers they have all the answers, but yet they are not moving don't you see that something is wrong with such kind of persons if you are like that may god deliver you in jesus name stop knowing too much stop knowing too much maybe it's not safe for you especially you know too much and it's not making any difference in your life the scripture says all disobedience will not be dealt with until your own obedience is complete until your obedience is complete so this year because all these things that i'm talking about they are very important instead of us to be uh, looking all around and claiming what is not <laughs> for us or something like that if you do the basic things you progress if you do the basic things you will not be stagnant if you're obedient to christ you will not you will not have anything you are facing is they are just always going to be like stepping stones for you to move higher stepping stone you see any challenge or something you just crush it you just move up you just crush it, you just move up praise the lord some of these things that we come across in life they are meant to elevate us they are meant to provoke i mean promote us praise god someone once told about, about a story of a chicken or a fowl or something that you know jumped into a well so they were looking at how to bring this how to help it out and so they started putting sound or soil or whatever into that thing as they were pouring that thing on this particular chicken what does this chicken what does it do what does what does it do whatever it shakes it off jumps on it shakes it off jump on it that's what the issues of life is meant to be for us but with the word of god with total surrender to jesus we will be able to scale through will be able to scale through but if you have one friend that pushes you here tomorrow you have another friend that pushes you here tomorrow you say oh it's happening there you say no 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 it's happening there oh you say no 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 oh this man of god is very hot he's on fire tomorrow that one is on water you aren't going to get anything out of life you aren't going to get anything out of life so jesus can deal with every situation of your life if you are fully surrendered to him some people have always said maybe ah, there are some prayers that god does not answer no god answers prayers he answers prayers he answers prayers very very well very very well he answers prayers some of you are not accountable no accountability i've been telling the singles people that are not married don't say somebody is beautiful and the person does not account to anybody if you marry that person ah you have entered one chance because when there's problem, there'll be nobody that you can report that person to. There'll be nobody that can talk to that person. You'll just be there, crying, all alone. I pray that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. So you see somebody that is not accountable to anybody, you better run away. Forget about the, um, whatever they call it. I pray that God will give us more understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. And whatsoever thing you are going through, of course, Hebrews. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, please. 
Hebrew chapter 4, verse 15. You know, this, this introductory message, they are very, very important so that we don't remain stagnant this year because these are basic things. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. So there's nothing you are going through. There's no parasite that is in your life, either spiritual or physical, that Jesus did not go through. He went through everything. So you can relate with him. You can relate with him. You can speak to him. He wants to speak to you. He wants to speak to you. He wants to speak to you. Every time Jesus wants to speak to you. And let me quickly move to the very last thing. He says, if they are hungry, they will never be at rest. If they are hungry, they will never be at rest. Of course, hunger can also be spiritual or physical. Spiritual in the sense that you are, you know, seriously searching for God. You want to grow in your spiritual life. So in that, you know what I tell people? And I've always said it, and I'll say it again. I'm never afraid to say that. If you're coming to this church and you're not being fed spiritually, please look for a place that will be fed spiritually. It's very, very important. To me, church is not, um, it's not a ceremony or ceremonial thing. Like, okay, let me just go to church today because everybody's going to church. No, 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 no. If you are going to a church and you are not, I heard that thing. I think when I was in, uh, when I was in Yabatek in Nigeria, that was when I heard that statement. That man said, I actually laughed at the man. I was like, oh, see these sweet, uh, sweet mouth preachers. That's what he said. He said, the, the, the quotes, for some of us that like rhymes, say, if your church is not changing you, change your church. That's what he said. <laughs> If your church, so what he meant was that if you are in a particular church and you are not growing, your spiritual life is having no effect, oh, please look for a place where it will have effect. Because that's very key and very important. Very, very key and very important. So if you are coming here, you are not being fed. You are free, oh, look for a church where you'll be fed. Because I will be happy that we have Christians in this community, firebrand Christians for Christ. That's my own joy as a person. I don't want to pack people together and we're just coming for uh, for jollification or just to come and you know celebration or uh, no ceremony that's that's the word I was looking for no that's not the point so hunger can be spiritual it can also be physical of course God wants to feed you God wants to provide for all your needs he wants to provide for all your needs but you need to be fully surrendered to him Jesus himself said, he's, he's, he said, I am the bread of life. John chapter 6, verse 35. Jesus is the bread of life. He's the bread of life. And talking about spiritually, if you look at John chapter 16 as well, I think from verse 11, 11, 12. Can you help us put John chapter 16 up? Go to verse 12, please. Look at this. I still have many things to say to you. But you cannot bear them now. That was then when the Holy Spirit. Next verse, please. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak of His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come. You see now that you are not supposed to depend on the pastor to know prophecy. Who are you supposed to depend on? No, you are not answering me now. Who are you supposed to depend on? The Holy Spirit. I like the way Paul Apostle put it in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let me check, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I think verse 12 or 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 or verse 13. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of who is from God, that we might what? Oh, please say it now. That we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. You see what you are losing or what you are missing when you are joking with your spiritual life. You won't, know, you won't even know the things that will happen to you. You won't even know the next step to take if you are joking with your spiritual life. Eh? If you think you want to go and see pastor, what if the pastor is not around? Praise God. I think I'll start traveling now so that some of us can grow very well. So that when you knock on my door, when you come my phone, you enter voicemail. <laughs> so you go and pray for yourself. Hear God by yourself. 
one of the things I'm sure we're going to look into this year also is how to hear from God, how to dedicate yourself, how to get, how to mature to that level. Because Jesus said in chapter 10, he said, my sheep knows me, they hear, they hear my voice. They hear my voice. I pray that God will give us more understanding in Jesus' name. He wants to provide for you. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. First Peter chapter 5 verse 7. Say, cast your cares on the Lord for what? He cares for you. So be fully surrendered to Jesus. Be fully surrendered to Jesus. Lastly this morning. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. And we are going to read it together. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. Can we read it together? I want to go. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Can you help us check NLT? What does NLT say? Please. Don't worry, I'm concluding already. Let's read it together again. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary, and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. In conclusion this morning, Jesus is not a tyrant. He's not one dictator. Because some people, that's why they have refused to come to the love of Jesus. They think Jesus wants to control their life, so I will not dress well again. No, 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 no. <laughs> you can still dress well. You can use the best cars. You can use the best things of life. That's the reality of it. Praise God. I'm not supposed to lack. You're not supposed to lack. But when, only when you come into full understanding of who Christ is. So, he still wants you to leave. He has not taken away your choice from you. It's of you to lay it down to him. Praise God. This is what some people out there are struggling with. It's not, uh, uh, what, whatever makes you to live a good life, is not a good thing to do. They know we are good people. They know, they call us good people actually. But they don't still want to come. Because they think maybe our life is, um, you know, I don't know what they think anyways. Praise the Lord. So, sometimes it's these religious leaders also that try to preach Christ in a way that you, you have fear. No, Jesus, Jesus in your life should take away every fear. He should dispel every fear. Every fear. He should dispel every fear. So you are not coming. That's why the scripture says, where we read, uh, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 says, For we do not have a high priest that cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. So whatever level you are, come back to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Come back to him. So I want us to pray this morning. I want us to pray. If you want to stand, you can stand. You want to kneel, you can kneel. You want to sit down, you can sit down. Um, whatever posture that you have. So this particular person has noticed four things. And we're going to pray about those four things this morning. The first thing you notice is that the sheep will never come to rest if they are afraid. I don't know who you are here, if that's your situation. Why not pray and say, Father, let your light dispel every fear from my life. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Let your light, let it dispel every fear out of my life. Whatever is causing me to fear. Sometimes maybe you cannot even sleep well. Maybe you are, when you think about something, your heart will just jump. Pray this morning that God will dispel every fear out of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because he is the true shepherd. He is the one and only true shepherd. So pray this morning that God would dispel every fear from your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray for yourself this morning. Pray for yourself this morning. Just like 10 more seconds to go because of time. Pray for yourself, pray for yourself. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. The second thing the guy observed is that Whenever there is friction among the sheep, the sheep will never come to rest. I want you to pray and say, Lord, help me to deal with my relationships in the way that it will be beneficial to me, in the way that will make me grow, in the way that I will not be stagnant because I'm failing to deal with them. Go ahead and pray for yourself. That God will help you to deal with your relationships. Go ahead and pray this morning. That God will help you to deal with your relationship. It is true that some people at your work, they are nasty. They are not good people. It's true that some people, even in the church, they are not doing nicely to you. But you know what those people will do eventually? They, will they don't make you grow. They make you to go and start all over again. 
pray that God will give you the wisdom to deal with them in the name of Jesus. Pray that you yourself will grow. Pray that you will grow. Pray that you grow. Some of it is not because you are not meeting somebody that is nice to get married to. The reason why your relationship has been failing, even when it comes to uh, you know, marital relationship, is because you don't know how to deal with people yet. So pray for yourself that God will help you to know how to deal with people this year. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Thirdly, I want you to pray for yourself. Whatever kind of parasite in my life, either spiritually or physically, Lord, by the end of today, as I'm leaving this meeting, let everything be dropped out of my life. Go ahead and pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Whatever kind of parasite that is affecting you, you know yourself. Everything, don't forget, parasites will not make you comfortable. They eat from you. They take away from you. They steal from you. That's what they do. Parasite brings nothing good. It brings nothing good. So pray for yourself that every form of parasite, spiritual or physical, that God will deal with them from your life. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Just two more prayer points. Now, this prayer point, you are going to pray for yourself and say, Father, feed my hunger spiritually and physically. Pray for yourself. That God will feed your hunger. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself this morning. That God will feed your hunger. That you'll never be hungry. That you'll never go hungry. Pray for yourself that you'll never go hungry. It means that you'll never lack. You'll not lack resources. That's what it means. You'll not lack finances. That's what it means. Pray that God will feed you physically and spiritually. Pray that God will feed your hunger. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself that God will feed your hunger. Pray for yourself that God will feed your hunger. Pray for yourself that God will feed your hunger. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Last prayer point. Before I pray this prayer point or give us all eyes closed. If you are here, you have just been. I know you are here, you must have heard about Jesus Christ, of course. And maybe somebody is bumping on this message online now. You have never surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Don't waste time. Just speak to God in your heart. And if you are here, maybe your relationship has been, you know, up and down. Why not use this opportunity to pray for yourself this morning? That God will help you. Lastly, everybody, our prayer point is that God will help you. God will help me to be fully submitted to him this year. Go ahead and pray for yourself. That's the last prayer point. Pray for yourself that God will help you to be fully surrendered to him. That God will help you to be fully submitted to him. That you, 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 the word will become your best friend. The word of God will become your best friend. Prayer will become your, your, your meat. You will pray every now and then. You will not just go and be gathering because, oh, I want to go to church. Let's just go to church today or something. No, that is not the life of a Christian. You should be involved in prayers. You should be involved in the word of God. Rightly dividing the word of truth every now and then. Study to show yourself approved. Pray that this year you'll be fully surrendered to the Lord. Pray for yourself this moment that you'll be fully surrendered to the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Father, we just want to thank you for this wonderful time this morning, Lord. We pray, Father, Lord, that every word that has come out this morning, Lord, you will help us that this word will be fruitful in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Every one of us struggling in one way or the other, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will help us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord.